Hello and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast and I am your host, Samuel. In this podcast, I interview top medical sales reps and leading medical sales executives across the entire country. And it doesn't matter what medical sales industry, from medical device to pharmaceutical to genetic testing to diagnostic lab, you name it, you will learn how to either break into the industry, be a top 5% performer within your role in sales, or climb the corporate ladder. Welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Medical Sales Podcast. Uh, Today we have with us a guest that comes from the medical sales space and decided to take a step towards entrepreneurship and stepped in to create a company called DME Connected. Uh, And they actually provide a service that allows representatives Uh, providers, the staff of the providers to communicate in a seamless fashion to get all the products and services they need for their patients. It's it's not an uncommon service, but it's it's a service that does not have too many competitors and DME Connected is a growing player in the space. So we have with us Courtney Richards. He's gonna get into it with us about what he does at DME Connected. So before I say any more, let me play this interview Again, as always, thank you for listening to the Medical Sales Podcast, and I hope you enjoy the interview. Hey, Corny, how are we doing today? Hey, I'm pretty good, Samuel. How are you? I'm fantastic. Um, You got a lot to share with us, and I'm so glad to have you on the show, but I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself. So please tell our audience who you are and what you do. Hello, my name is Courtney Richards. I am the founder and CEO of DME Connected. DME Connected is an online marketplace for medical providers to find the best vendor or medical sales rep to help out with their patient needs. So, so let's let's get into that a little bit because I know that you know some people know exactly what you're talking about, but some people yes. don't. So okay. talk to us a little bit more about that process, what that looks like, and why your service is beneficial. Okay, so in layman terms, pretty much it's a marketplace. So when medical providers, and we're when we're saying medical providers. We're talking about nurses, RTs, medical assistant, anyone that's part of that medical staff, when they need to find detailed information on a vendor or a sales rep that can help them out with the patient's medical equipment or services, then they'll go to DME Connected. So that's basically who we are and that's what we do. Got it, got it. So how is this different than, than uh, you know, a nurse, for example, having an established relationship with a representative and just knowing to call that person where okay. does where does a service like yours come into play there? Well, pre-COVID, pre the pandemic, you know, we spoke to medical providers and medical offices and they let us know that, hey, they were seeing about 10 to 12 reps per day. Right. You know, and these reps are dropping off information, always soliciting them for um for orders for patients and to help them out. Now COVID happened and a lot of these medical sales reps are locked out of the office mm. because they don't want any type of contamination that's going on and they're trying to limit the foot traffic that's coming in. So, you know, we've heard from some of our vendor partners that hey, we can't even get in and speak to them. And that's where DME Connected actually comes in. So pre-COVID, you know, they was reaching out to multiple reps to try and help them out, or they will do a Google search, or they will go through their file folder of, you know, order forms and information that people have dropped off to them, or they'll just be doing back and forth texting with their sales rep. Um, That's what used to go on before. Um, Right now, when we came up with the system, we're helping with the inefficiency of of those processes, because now you don't have to search for anything. You know, we partner with the vendors that you work with and we get all their information in one centralized location. And then we offer the service to the medical provider for free. Got it. So does the, I guess what what I want to understand is how does the rep play into this service? Are they kind of removed from interacting with the office as much or? No, and that's the great thing about it because I've been a rep for many years and that's the last thing I wanted to do. You know, I wanted that personalized service with the um, with the vendors and the medical staff and so forth. What we did was that we came up with a sales rep portal. So even if, so one of the problems that, that they're facing is that no matter how good of a rep you are, even if you're coming into an industry, you'll never be able to touch everyone, right. you know? So with DME Connected, what we're doing is that we're increasing your footprint you know, in these medical offices and hospitals. So that in turn will help you to be able to just establish more business and more relationships. Why? Because when medical staff member are looking for anything, 
they can go into our sales rep portal and put exactly the service that they're looking for, the zip code, and it will be able to bring up these sales rep and say, hey, you know, Samuel, I'm looking for a wound vac therapy and I see that you represent it. Hey, stop by, give me a call. Maybe I want to do an in-service. So that's one of the ways that we help out with the sales reps as well too. And then also by having all their information in one centralized location is more efficient when they need to get contact. So even through the web application that we offer or through our Alexa system that we offer medical systems, this is really efficient for getting in contact with the sales reps. Got it, got it. So if a nurse has a sales rep in mind that they want to yes. contact, and mm -hmm. but they need the service, yes. you know, and they say, and they tell another nurse, you know what, go ahead and look up what we need, and they mm -hmm. find a different rep, Yes. how does it work? You know, if, if, if a nurse wants to use rep A, and they look yes. at the service and rep B is, is offered to them because it's available in the system, mm -hmm. how is that reconciled? Like, what, what happens? Hey, that's what we leave. That's why we said this will never replace a rep. A rep got to continually maintain and build that relationship with that medical practice. You know, what we do like to tell the reps is to become a little bit more personalized in their actual profile to let the, the medical office know about them a little bit more. You know, if it's their favorite sports team, you know, their education, how long have they been in the industry? Because this is your digital profile. You know, this is your first 30 seconds of introducing to this clinic if you've never had a relationship with them. So that reconciliation that we speak about, that is up to the medical office, but at least you'll be on that list and within that playing field. So mm -hmm. if you have that existing relationship and they just need to get in contact with you or they can't find your business cards right. or get a hold of the phone or something, right. Right. then guess what? They have everything there and they That's can send cool. emails out of the system. We added a new feature now where they can do face-to-face -face speaking just like how we do right now. Yeah. So these are all ways that's helping out that medical rep, you know, always have that relationship. Wow, so this is pretty innovative and yeah. uh, I can't wait to hear more about how this all works and I'm really about to explain it. But first, we have to get into who you are and how you even came to discover this. So let's, let's wow. walk it back. Wow. Take us to the beginning. Take us to the beginning, wow. Courtney. So, so let me take you back about 10 to 15 years all ago. Right. All right, go ahead. So I, I've been in the field for 10 years. I've been closely in, uh, working in the healthcare industry for close to 15 years. So I started working in the durable medical equipment and home health services for one of the nation's largest providers, right? Um, so I was assigned a branch um, with a team and we had to pretty much grow that business. You know, and if you know anything about durable medical equipment and medical devices, it's a very hard job. You know, you got to build your relationships. You got to be involved in operations to make sure patients are being taken care of and delivered. You got to build the relationship also with the medical staff. You have to stay ahead of insurance changes. And there's just so many changes. You know, when I first came in the industry, they, they told me, even in training, they say, hey, the likelihood of you learning the industry is going to take you about six months. Right. That's because so many things happen before you start becoming real comfortable with it. And when I started way back when they used to give you a guarantee. So, they, you know, at the end of the month, they gave you a guaranteed commission just to hold you over because they understood that how complex that industry was. So was right. that, so so then you did durable equipment out of college or what? What did you this? Is, no. OK, no, this was my first healthcare job dealing specifically with medical providers and on the patient end. Got it. Um, previously before that, I was in telecommunications work with hospitals, but on the communication end. And then I actually got, you know, with the large provider that I spoke about, and that was when I was doing that face-to-face -face interaction, speaking with doctors, um, just assuring them that we can take care of their patients, growing our business, our bottom line, to make sure we could keep the lights on, you so know? So you were telecommunications sales rep. Yes. And and then you became a durable medical equipment sales rep. That's correct. And what that, and, and if you in telecommunications you were, you said you were initially working with hospitals. So yes. is this is healthcare a focus you've always had? Like you've always want you've always known you've wanted to be in that space. I've always known that I want to be in that space. You know, my mother worked in the medical industry for 30 plus years at Mount Sinai Hospital sure. in New York City. So I've always had that connection with it. Yeah. Um, close one of my aunts as well, too, was a nurse, 
you know, in Brooklyn Hospital in Brooklyn, New York for many years as well, too. So I was always drawn to that industry. And plus, you know, in the Caribbean household, you know, coming from Jamaica, they always said, hey, get into healthcare. It was either healthcare mechanics. <laughs> that was the safest bet, you know. So um, growing up, I was always fascinated, you know, just with health and helping people out. So I moved from the telecommunications to have a more face to face interaction so I can learn the industry in and out, you know, and my overall personality. I come from a big family. You know, I have eight brothers. Wow. So we always always had to go in and help each other, okay. you know, so helping each other has always stuck and resonated with me. And I just want to go out there and help as much people as possible. So I had to figure out a way, how can I broaden my footprint? Wow. Right. And, and are you, were you born and raised part of your life in Jamaica or were you born here? Yeah, I was actually born in Jamaica. Um, I came to America when I was seven, uh-huh. right? And then I spent the rest of my time in New York City. And then for the last couple of years, I was living in Atlanta uh-huh. um, where I actually really built up my my knowledge base, you know, of the healthcare space. And currently right now I'm in the Miami area. Wow, okay, all right, all right. So telecommunications yeah. to medical, mm-hmm. to sales rep at, in medical durable equipment. Yes. And and that jump, was that pretty easy for you to make? Was that a bit of a challenge? How do you how do you get into that role? I would say when I first came in, it was a challenge because when you start working in durable medical equipment and put it like this, the company I was working with, you know, in my particular area, there were so many challenges because there was no rep in that area Mm -hmm. for a very long time. And when no one is not in that area for a very long time, things fall between the cracks and then there's no dependency, you know, these medical providers and offices and hospitals, they want someone that they can depend on that's going to be there 24 seven, you know, and and that's, we always said, if you can control the flow, of the information for your company, then you will be successful. Love it. You know? so give, give us an example of durable medical equipment. Okay. So durable medical equipment ranges anywhere from a nebulizer to a hospital bed to a high tier items such as oxygen and ventilators. It's just such a very broad space. Um, but when you start in the durable medical equipment industry, they usually give you key focus products. And that's what they did for myself. Okay. You know, they gave us the five key focus products that we had to work and generate revenue for. Everything else, even though we helped assist, um, you know, hospitals and providers with that, mm-hmm. you didn't get paid off of it. Got you know, it. so I and because of the my personality, I was helping people out with like, for example, hospital beds. Someone will call us say, hey, I need a hospital bed or a bariatric walk or something. And I would still help them out because even though I wasn't getting paid, my job was pretty much to build that relationship. So right? who, is your, who is your call point in that space? Yeah, so my call points was basically physicians, first of all. Mm-hmm. That's everyone's call point. <laughs> but then it's the, right, it's the, you gotta get through it with the physicians. Sure, sure. Um, but then you gotta build your relationship with ev- anyone that's placing the orders. So that can be a DME coordinator sometimes, that could be a respiratory therapist sometimes. It can be a nurse, you know? So, and then you had some influences that was just the front office staff members that fill in sometimes. So our call points were so wide that you have to go in there, go in deep and go wide and build your relationship with everyone. Because, you know, sometimes you have influencers that you can speak to them and say, hey, if you see this particular type of patient, I'm your guy. Got it. You know, and then from there, then you can build your relationship with everyone else. How long were you in this role? Eight years, my friend. Eight years. So you learned it pretty years. well. You learned it pretty well. I, I, learned a, I learned tremendous amount just about people in general. You know, that's one of the things when you come in as a sales rep. You have to be able to be that personable person and understand people's challenges. Right. You know, it's not always about selling. It's, it's really about solution based. Right. So, you know, when I first came into the space, the first thing I want to do was say, hey, call me for everything. <laughs> right. Right. right, um, right. I want to be that source that can help you all with everything. And by that, you start with a large funnel and then you can narrow down and say, OK, these are the things that I really need to focus on to keep my branch open. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. so that's what I can tell you. Gotcha. All right. So you were there eight years. Yes. And then what was the next move? Then the next move, I actually went on to the manufacturing end 
right? Which was a larger company deal worldwide, but they didn't, they did more than just distribution. So when I was in durable medical equipment, the industry is that these branches work more like distributors. Mm -hmm. I went directly and worked for a manufacturer. You can know, you, can you share with us who that was? Yes, that was Philips. Philips. That was Philips. That's a, that's a yeah. huge company. That that's is a huge company. Huge company, phenomenal company. Okay. You know, the company culture is great. I yeah. learned a great deal of them as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was durable medical equipment, I really started to grow a good strength on respiratory. Sure. So that became my bread and butter. So when I went over to Philips, I went with the respiratory team. You know, and then that's when I started to do percussion vest therapy and cough assist therapy as well, too. And I can tell you the team that I worked with was just tremendous in how they took detail to teach you about the product, yeah. which is even more than durable medical equipment, but then how it affects that patient, you know? And then that's when you really build up your industry knowledge so you can have education, you know, educational conversation with physicians about the do's and don'ts and why you can be better than someone else. Right. So so what prompted the move from durable medical equipment into this more targeted space within Philips? Well, they recruited me. <laughs> oh, they recruited OK, so you're like, no, nah, man, I was I was fine. I was living my life and I got headhunted. Hey, hey, um, I was doing phenomenal numbers. Sure, at durable sure, medical equipment. Sure. Um, but, you know, I can also tell you that even the durable medical equipment, sometimes you start becoming lag and being burnt out. Got right. It. Because yeah. like what I said, yeah. you cannot touch everything, even though you tried. You know, I was working nights. I was working weekends. I was on vacation and people were calling me because they built that trust basically on Courtney can assist them with this patient. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. and, and that's what I brought to Phillips. And then when I got to Phillips, I, I felt like a relief. Like I didn't have to worry about the bent metal, you know, the walkers, the canes. And, you know, I had to take care of all of that when I was at the other company. But now I was more focused and I was more specialized so I can really speak with pulmonary, you know, and all the other call points and let them know about, hey, the product and how we're better. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So you're at Phillips. You're doing yes. your thing. Yes. Um, so when, when, what happened within Phillips that turned you on to entrepreneurship and brought you to where you are today? What happened? Well, entrepreneurship was always in me. Oh, okay. it was always all right. All right. right. It was always in me. So even when you work on any sales job, you have to understand that you're your own business. Mm -hmm. you got to understand, you know, your employee is more along like your partners, you know, but you're your own business. And that's how I like to look at it. And as a business owner, I looked at it like, hey, Phillips in that particular department was going through the same problems and the same issues as the durable medical equipment call point, right? So I noticed these inefficiencies within these medical offices where you can build a strong relationship, but at the end of the day, I have to make this very clear, people are go gonna go with the path of the least resistant. Mm -hmm. Right. So I can go into a medical office and I can do an in-service and I can teach them about the products and everything else. But when it becomes time to place that order for that patient, how are they getting your information? Mm -hmm. And are you readily available to answer their question that can help them out? Because they're seeing tons of patients. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one practice that I seen, they had multiple, multiple providers, but they say they see about 89 patients per day. Right. Wow. Right. 89. Yeah. So yeah. think about when it becomes time to place an order for any type of medical equipment right. or services. Right. And it's the same thing with home health. You know, that's why, you know, these companies spend millions of dollars to pay their sales team to try and get on this list. You know, they have this list. Right. And that's that's that vendor's list. So, you know, if you're one of the ones that's not on that list, it's very hard to break into. You so, know? OK. So you saw a gap, you yes. clearly saw a need, and obviously to yourself, you said, I want to do something about it. Yes. But I know there was more involved than that. I mean, you had to have maybe talked to somebody or whether it be a physician or a nurse or a colleague. Walk us through, you know, what made you confident enough to yes. take the leap and to say, you know what, I'm going to put all of my energy and focus in addressing this need. So the difference between Phillips and my previous employee before that was, 
with Phillips, we had to do, you know, in services and lunches where you actually sit with physicians Mm -hmm. and, you know, the high tier of that office, whether there's an office manager, an administrator, and we really speak to them about day-to-day challenges. And one, one day I went out, it was a nurse practitioner. And I said, Hey, you know, everything about my product, you know, me, I've known you for a couple of years. Just answer me. How do you place your orders? when you get ready to. And she said, hey, Courtney, I go to this little file folder on my desk Mm -hmm. and I have everyone's order form and I have every business card, I scan them and I put them in these individual folders. And I said, but that's what you have medical assistance for. And she said, hey, yeah, Courtney, but they're always, you know, they always have a lot going on. They always have different stuff in different places. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to be able to get to this quickly. So sometimes I just go to my file folders, print it out and hand it to them. And they're the one that actually do the fulfillment of it and all the documentation. And then I just signed a prescription. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the same thing I've been talking about for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I need one centralized location because I myself in the field, I, I'm in the hospital and I'm dealing with a wound vac patient and a surgeon. And then I get a call and there's someone that needs a ventilator. They say, Courtney, I want to place this order, but I don't have your order forms. Can you send it over to me? You know, and just me being in the field for many years, I had a fillable PDF. I could email it to them. Or, you know, when I get back to the branch, I can fax it to them or I email. There's so many different ways I got across to them, but it was just the multitude of different calls that I kept getting. Like, what insurance do you accept? Hey, I need a patient to go to your branch. What's the address? You know, hey, it's just so many of these little intricate things that's going to break down your day. That's going to hold you back from really doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. So that's when I had that confidence to say, hey, this is definitely a need within the industry, you know, because it's not only with the previous company or Phillips. I, I speak to my sales rep partners as well, too. And even between us, sometimes we would call and say, hey, do you accept do we accept Medicare for this patient? <laughs> right. <laughs> and even, you know, and these are because there's so much that you cannot remember, mm-hmm. you know, and the medical practice, they're not going to remember that either at the hospitals. Mm-hmm. So that's where I, I say confidently, hey, this is something that needs to be done. I feel wholeheartedly about it because I have blood, sweat, and tears that I can tell right. people stories on, right. on hey, how we had to rework the order because it was the wrong order form, right. or we received an order, I had to set it back, or we didn't accept that insurance. You know, so I, I can just tell you tons of stories, but I don't want to ramble. I mean, you can <laughs> let me tell you next question, right? All right. So, okay. So then, so then you, you, you had this experience, you, you yes. finally decided to do it. Um, how is this how long have you been and we are going to stop there so you can turn in next week for part two with courtney richards anything that helps a business or a professional or a provider i mean you name it anything that helps anyone be more efficient is 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 useful and you know what i love hearing about dme connected you know, and what I love hearing about Courtney's story specifically is how he, he literally saw the inefficiencies in the field. And he said, you know what? Something needs to be done about this. What, how can I do something? How can I contribute to getting in front of the solution? And then DME Connected was born. And to infuse, you know, Alexa into it and, and make it as seamless as possible, especially moving into the future where, you know, we can really utilize these audio capabilities to do whatever we need done. It's, it's something to see, and, and it's an exciting thing to watch. And Courtney is going to get more into it in part two. So make sure you tune in next week. We're not only going to get a taste of what he's specifically been doing when it comes to Alexa with uh, DME Connected, but we might get a little sample of how he does it. So, and I definitely want everyone listening to hear that. So thank you again for listening to the Medical Sales Podcast. Um, As always, if you're someone that's looking to get into a role like this, you want to be a pharmaceutical sales rep or medical device sales rep, or you're looking to get into genetic testing sales, or just something in the medical sales space, then make sure you reach out on LinkedIn to Samuel Dayinka or visit our website at evolveyoursuccess.com and follow the prompts. You'll be able to get in touch with us and we can talk about how we can get you into a program that has been so successful in getting professionals where they want to be in the medical sales space. And of course, if you're a performer out there, you're someone that, you know, you're in your career or you, you've just been promoted to a position 
and you're saying, you know what, I really want to take it by the reins and do something amazing, and I want to start with a strong brand, strong foundation, and really make things happen, then again, take a look at evolversuccess.com, visit our, you know, follow the prompts, visit our page, and look up improved sales performance. This is also something that leaders can utilize. If you're looking for something to get your team where they need to be, then again, reach out to us. You can find me on LinkedIn at Samuel Dayinka or visit our site at EvolverSuccess.com. As always, I am so grateful for all of my listeners out there that are listening to the Medical Sales Podcast, getting valuable insights into what they want to do with their careers, how they want to lead better, how they want to perform better, and how they want to make an even bigger impact in the things they do every day. So continue listening, and again, make sure you tune in next week for part two with Courtney Richards. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember, I have a couple programs that show you exactly how to break into the medical sales industry, become a top performing medical sales professional, and also how to masterfully navigate your career to executive level leadership. Check out these programs and learn more at EvolveYourSuccess.com. Stay tuned for more awesome content with amazing interviews.